Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial video. Uh, this time around it's going to be in three parts. I'm going to be doing the endless spells for the night haunt. So to start off with I'm going to be doing the Shyest Reaper. So it looks quite simple to paint. I have been putting it off for quite a while. Like I have had them for quite some time now but never actually got around to painting them. So I mean, to start off with I'm going to be using the Mournfang Brown as for the handle as you would on a scythe anyway. So I'm gonna get straight into it. You're gonna want to use a wet palette again as I normally do. Because so, there's quite a large area to cover with the brown I'm gonna need quite a lot on the palette beforehand. Now you will notice when I start to apply this is I did actually dilute it a bit too much. So that's not a problem. You can just go over it with a couple of coats. Just give it a nice finish over the surface. Yeah, it does take a bit longer. But that's what you get for not concentrating on how much water you add to the paint. Obviously, do the hand pinchy thingy. get started now because it's the first colour we're using uh, same as normal you don't need to be super neat with it just slap it on if you can avoid the areas that you don't want brown do it as much as you can but as you'll see like when I move it closer to the camera later in the video that you will see that I have gone over in quite a few places. So you're going to want to make sure the entire handle is covered. One, two, maybe three coats. There you go, so as you can see the brown's basically done there. Uh, that is after a couple of coats. Let's go over some of the areas because you can still see the Corax white base spray underneath. Make sure the brush is clean because I'm going to be using, well I do use that for the next part as well. So the next one's the Abaddon Black. I'm going to be using that on most of, but not all of the metal part on the scythe. As you can see, I've got brown paint on my fingers. Pretty early on, but it happens. So again with this, I'm probably going to need quite a bit. That's it, it's quite a large area that I need to cover with the black. So the only place you've got to be neat with the black is around near where you've like, done the handle for the scythe. But everywhere else again, doesn't matter so much because we can go around. And I do later on go around and touch up all the white areas. So, as you can see, get a nice coat over the top.
guess they're going to do the usual in a minute and skip past most of it because you ain't going to want to watch all of it as per usual. So, but when you're going around this, just make sure that all of the mill areas are covered. And try to be as neat as you can when you get close to the handle. Yeah. You might notice I do go over a little bit onto the brown. But later on I go around and touch all that up before going any further. So now the black's done, instead of going over the rest of it just yet, I go over with a dry brush on some of the bits like the handles and the metal. So just the parts that I've done, because dry brushing can be quite messy and you don't want to mess up any other, well, any of the detailed areas that you do later on. Oh, there you go, get a roll away brush. going to be using these silver nest bark now I noticed once I'd recorded and watched this one back that you can't actually tell much of a difference when I apply this to the handle but in person you can actually see it does brighten up the like the edges of the handle not by much but it just adds that bit more detail in As always, we'll draw our brush in, load the brush up, and then pretty much wipe it all off just to get a very, very small amount on the brush. Yeah, for this part, I am only using a small dry brush so, because it's not too large of an area, so I don't need a big brush for this. Be super messy a bit, making sure you cover the whole wood. So that's the dry brushing done. Like I said, you can't really notice on camera the difference, but there is a difference. It's a big difference. Make sure I clean the brush because I'm going to be dry brushing the metal parts next. So the next dry brush I'm going on to is the Necron Compound, and that's to add a shine to the metal areas. There you'll see I go over the sharper edges a bit more than the face of it, uh, and that does just make it like shinier on the corners to give it that sharpness look. Now you can see I'm brushing away from the handle 
obviously trying not to get anything like any of the Necron compound on the handle before like because obviously just finish out you don't want to ruin your nice artwork already So the Necron compound is near enough done now. So it's highlighted all of the areas you can see, especially on the sharper parts, it's highlighted it nicely. I want it to be quite dark anyway. Don't want it to be too silvery. Making sure you've completely covered all the areas, you don't want it to look odd. Make sure the brush is clean. You can already see how dirty the water is. I need to replace that. Well, I do replace that shortly. So clean the brush in case I need it later on. Now, going to be going over the whole lot with the Nuln Oil now. So everything that we just painted, I'm going to be coating in the Nuln Oil. And that just gets in all of the cracks and crevices of the wood. Now for this I am using a medium layer brush. So I'm going to need to cover quite a lot of area. So it's pointless grabbing too small of a brush. We'll be on it for hours otherwise. Something I haven't actually mentioned before about using shade paints, such as like non oil or things like that, is you don't really want to overload your brush too much with it, otherwise, you'll get like pretty much running of the paint and you don't know even though you can maneuver it yourself to like, and persuade it into different areas it just makes it a bit easier if you have like a sort of bright amount on your brush first there you go so as you can see it has gone in all the cracks on the wood it's looking quite nice so far looks a bit boring but we do start to add in the night haunt colours eventually. <laughs> As you can see I did just throw my paint across the table. I'm going to be using the Cantor Blue. When you are shaking it, just be sure to keep hold of it, unlike me. So I did just throw it across my desk. I suppose it's a good way of shaking the bottle up, but I was just lucky it didn't open. Now, with the Cantor Blue, I am going to be doing the... Like, the middle section of the blade so not where the skulls are because I'm going to be making them gold later on but I'm going to be using a fine detail brush for this 
Only because, one, I don't want to be going over the black. And two, I don't want to be going over the skulls too much. Or it'll no, it'd take too many coats of the gold to go over and hide the blue. There you go, it's a fine detail brush. Yeah, you do see the side of me head here, because I do need to get quite close. I just wanted to keep it in view for you. Yeah, you might not notice much of a difference. I mean, it's obvious to tell which one's blue and which one's black. But when the Cantor blue dries, you can definitely tell the difference, and it does make it stand out quite a bit better. So let's just finish up the Cantor blue now. You can see I've gone a little bit over the skulls. That's not too much to worry about, but I was just trying to avoid it. But using the fine detail brush really does help. Yeah, so there you go. You can see the difference between the blue and the black. Oh, sorry. Now, up next I'm going to be keeping, I'm going to keep using the fine detail brush. I'm now going to be moving on to the skulls on the blade. So I had a bit of a think about what colour I wanted them, and I think blue would make uh, gold would make them stand out quite a bit better. So I've gone for the Retributor armor. Yeah, I am running low on this, as you can see, because most of it's on the outside of the pot. So I do need to get myself some more.
So it was all base colours, either wet palette or um, and I am just very carefully going over the skulls, trying to avoid the blue and the black areas. Yeah. If you do go over, as normal, you can just go over, like touching up afterwards. That's not a problem. But when you're at this stage and you've got all the paint that done around it, you want to try your best to avoid it. So as you can see I've also done the padlocks gold, so the chains I'm going to be doing a slightly different colour, I want to do them, well I've done them like a coppery colour, just to make them different so it just doesn't look like one continuous gold chain. There you go, so just make sure you've sure you got all sides done, trying to avoid the handle of the scythe. Yes, now the gold's done, you can see that that really does stand out on the blade. Just makes it look that bit nicer. Like, I think you always need something that stands out in particular on a model. There you go, so I'm all done with the gold now completely. So, I then go on to painting the chains. So, connect to the padlock with the Balthazar Gold. So, although it's called gold on the label, it does come out like a um, sort of like a coppery colour. So it just makes it a bit darker and makes it tell the, helps tell the difference a bit better between that and the padlock. Now with painting things such as chains and that, it is better to dilute your paint that bit more. Just so then it can fall into the recesses a bit easier and stop you tapping away for ages just trying to get it in the gaps. Yeah, 
So as you can see, the chains have turned out quite nicely, actually. Yeah, you can definitely tell the difference between the two. Now, we'll be adding a technical paint over the top of these. But that'll be the same one as the flames that I'm going to be using. Now I do skip ahead in the video a bit now, uh, but this is just the time I'm going to be using just to do the touch-ups like um, I've gone over any of the white or the black, anything like that. I'm just going to go through, do some touching up on them. Then we're going to be moving on to the flames. Right, so all the touch-ups now been done. Like going over any places that I've gone over the line. It's looking quite nice. I'm ready for my next sort of paint now. And the next one I'm just going to be going straight over the primer spray, the Corex White, with the Hex Wraith Flame. Uh, and that I'm going to be going all over the flames and even the chain, just so that it gives the chain sort of of green to it as well. The good thing about using a technical paint like the Hex Race Flame, you can just slap it on. Like it falls into the recesses naturally, which is quite nice. Give it some nice shading. But it just, as normally needs to be careful when you get to the already painted areas. Doing the last few bits of the x flame. I have gone over the chains, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you might see it when I move it closer to the camera. So now I'm done with the Hex Race Flame, covering all the flames and the chains. Uh, I'm going to be going over the same part again, for all of the flames, with the Cassandora Yellow. Now, although it looks orange in the tub, 
it is far from it. Again, using a medium layer brush, just going over everywhere that I've done before with the hex race flame. That just gives it like a nice fiery look to the flame, instead of it just being like a green ghostly flame, which you can have. There's nothing wrong with that. So I prefer to give it sort of like a yellowy flame to it as well. Yeah, so you can definitely see the difference between just Hex Wraith and Hex Wraith and Gryffindor Yellow. It does come out looking quite nice, actually. So that is near enough all of the shading done now. As you can see, I'm just going up finishing it off. So now, at this point, I do go back over with the known oil. So, medium layer brush again. Uh, and this is just to go over the golden skulls and the padlocks. As you can see, a very small amount. Just so it falls into the recesses nicely. And that is this near enough done. We've got a few more little finishing touches. Uh, I'm going to base these off camera again because I want to dedicate a video just to basing miniatures. So I won't be covering it in this one. But I would say so far so good. Not looking too bad. And there you have it. So it's all based. Granted, it's not my best base, but I did just slap that one on. And that's looking pretty good, if you ask me. So it'd be good enough to put on the table. So this was really fun to paint. I did like painting this one because it was extremely simple. So I mean, you can paint however you want. People have their own styles. Some prefer the bluey colour, red. But I prefer the green flame, if you want me to be completely honest. If you did like my video, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And yeah, as well, share with your friends, subscribe to my page and happy painting.